if you're here watching this video today because you don't know for sure that you're saved, would you watch this video through to the end? The Bible says that we need to be saved. Why? Why do we need a Savior? Why do we need a Messiah? Well, because after God created us, we sinned. After God created us, we defiled ourselves. We chose to sin against God. God is the just judge. He is three times holy in the Bible. He is so holy, He cannot allow sin into, his, into, into heaven. It says in Revelation 21, verse number 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, or worketh an abomination, or anything that maketh a lie. Just in case you got through those first two, well, I don't defile, and, and I don't do things that are abominable, then he includes, or anything that maketh a lie. In other words, if I've lied, I'm a liar. One time is all it took. I have trespassed against God. I have crossed the line. I've sinned. The Bible says we're all sinners. The Bible says in, in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Just in case we can think that, hey, we're good enough, that, that God has somehow, he, that we've earned a salvation from God. But the Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've come short of God's glory. The Bible says, there shall in no wise enter into it anything it says, that maketh a lie. That gives us a pretty big problem. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Not just physical death, while that is true. We're talking about eternal death, what the Bible refers to as the second death in Revelation 20. An eternal separation from God in hell. That's the second death. That's what the wages of sin are. Wages are what we earn. That's what we earn for our sin. We're all sinners. The Bible says in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so, death passed upon all men. I've never had to teach my children to lie. I never had to teach my children to cheat or to prefer themselves more than everybody else. Sin comes naturally to us when we're born. In fact, we have to do the opposite. We have to teach them how to share. We have to teach them how to not be selfish. We have to teach them how to be honest, even though it might hurt them. We have to teach them how to do what's right and train them to discipline themselves to do what's right. So how is this made possible to us? How is salvation made possible to a sinner like me? It was made through Jesus Christ because He loves us. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's how much God loved us. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know what that means? It means that God looked down time and He saw people like you and I and He loved us so much that even though He knew what wicked thoughts we might think, even though we knew how we would lie, even though He knew how many of us would reject Him, even though He saw the crowds that would stand before Jesus and would lie about Him to the Roman officials, they would shout, crucify Him, they would spit upon Him, they would beat Him, even though He looked down time and He saw all of those things, He still loved those people and He still loved you enough to go ahead and send his son to this earth. We celebrate that at Christmas time, the coming of the Messiah, being born into this world. But he didn't come just to be a good man. He didn't come just to be a prophet. He didn't come just so that we could have good things written about him. He came for the very sole reason of what happened that last day of his life on the cross. You see, Jesus could have gotten out of that death he could, have, he could have come down off that cross if he wanted to. He could have just thought it and the soldiers would have all died. But 
The sole reason he came to this earth was to die on that cross, to save you from your sin, to save me from my sin. That's why he didn't come down off that cross, even when he could have. Was Jesus murdered? No. Was Jesus just a revolutionary that had gone too far? No. The very reason Christ came was to hang upon that cross and to shed his blood. Christ died for our sins. Romans 3.24 says this, But being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. John 14.6, Jesus says this. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There are many that might say, well, don't all religions generally lead to God? That's not what the Bible says. But if I go and I pray in, in, in Joseph Smith's name, or if I pray in some other prophet's name, or some other saint's name, or even in Mary's name, doesn't that mean that I'm going to be saved? Doesn't God honor that or respect that? Because He knows I'm sincere? No, because He's given us the truth from the Word of God. Jesus said, I am the way. I is singular. The way talks about the lone path to salvation. He says, I am the way. He says, I am the truth. If it contradicts what Jesus did or said, it's not the truth. If it contradicts the Word of God, it's not the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Talking about eternal life there. And then he says, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's no other name but Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to say his name. It's the most important name in all of time, the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts 16.31, the Philippian jailer asks Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they respond, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you think you are. You have not gone so far away from God that He cannot save you, redeem you from the penalty of your sins. The only thing that we can do that God will not save is to reject Him and to say, no, I don't believe God. No, I don't believe Jesus Christ. I don't believe He is who He says He is. I don't believe He is the way, the truth, and the life. I choose not to believe that. That's the only sin that God is not able to forgive. Unbelief. But we could think of major um, characters from our history that we would think as terrible people because of the amount of atrocities that they committed. However, God was still able to save them if they would but ask. So how do we get salvation? Is it, is it through joining the church? No. Is it through baptism? No. Is it through giving money in the offering plate? No. Is it through learning catechisms and, and memorizing facts about God or Jesus or the Bible? No. That's not how you get saved. It's not through the things which we do. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. And then down in verse 13 it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible tells us that it is a free gift. I quoted Rev, um, Romans 6.23 earlier where it said the wages of sin is death. That's what we earn. But the verse goes on and it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What salvation is, is believing that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. That he is the Son of God. That he is the Messiah and the Savior. That he is God himself in flesh, as John 1 tells us that he is. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. You say, well, what does that mean exactly, dying on the cross for our sins? 
He died on that cross shedding his blood like a sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the Jews had to bring their sacrifices to the altar and temporarily their sins would be covered by the blood of that lamb or bull or goat or turtle dove, whatever they brought. But then they would have to come and do it again later. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, He was to come and to be the final sacrifice, the last blood that we would ever need. And His blood permanently covers sins. So that when I ask God to save me, when I ask God to forgive me of my sins, when I tell God that I believe in Him, His blood washes away those sins. The Bible said there in Romans 6, 23, but the gift of God is eternal life. You know the unique thing about a gift that separates it from so many other things is that you don't have to do anything to earn it or deserve it. It is a gift. And if the gift remains in my hand, do you get to uh, appreciate any of the benefits of that gift? Well, no, because it's still in my hand. Until you reach out and you take it from me, until you reach out and receive that gift, you don't get to appreciate the benefits of that gift. Until you reach out and receive the gift of salvation that God offers to all of mankind. Remember the Bible says, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's His will. That's what He desires, that all would be saved. It has everything to do with Jesus and absolutely nothing to do with me. There's a couple really good verses, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that say this, for by grace, are ye saved through faith? Let me pause there. It says, for by grace. Grace is unmerited favor. It is when God chooses to show favor to us even though we have not deserved or earned it. For by grace are ye saved. In other words, I couldn't have earned it. It was given to me outside of my ability to earn it. For by grace are ye saved, how? Through faith. It's not through works. It's not through doing good things. It's not through my performance or my ability or my goodness. It's through my faith. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3.15 says a very similar verse. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. You see, it's God that does the saving. It's not me that earns it. It's not me that achieves it. There's no ladder tall enough for me to climb my way to heaven. There is no good work good enough for me to earn my way to heaven by His mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is when we don't give somebody what they deserve. They deserve jail time. They deserve punishment. They deserve condemnation, but we choose to withhold that judgment. That's mercy. And what separates us from grace? Grace is when we get something we don't deserve. When we get favor from God we don't deserve. Mercy is when we don't get judgment from God we do deserve. Grace and mercy work hand in hand. And praise the Lord, God is a loving and a gracious and a merciful God. So it's not anything that you can do. And it's everything that Jesus Christ did. When he died on that cross, as he was about to die, he pulled himself up and he announced, it is finished. Did he just mean I'm about to die? No. What he meant was the plan of salvation, it's done. I have done what I've come to do. It is finished. It was at that moment that inside the temple in Jerusalem, the veil, the curtain that separated the holy place from the holy of holies, it tore in half. Why? Because now that the last blood that was ever needed to be sacrificed was sacrificed, Jesus was going to take that blood to the presence of God. And there, He would offer it to cover sins of all mankind for all eternity. No longer did we need a high priest to go into the Holy of Holies and to sprinkle blood onto the mercy seat for the people of Israel. It was no longer necessary. Now the last sacrifice, the final sacrifice that ever needed to be offered was done. And it was all Jesus Christ. And it was not me at all. What happened to Jesus Christ after he died though? 
Well, the Bible says after he died, he was put into a borrowed grave. It wasn't even his own, but that's okay because he wasn't going to need it for very long. He was put into somebody else's tomb, a brand new one that had just been purchased. And he lay there for three nights. That's what the Bible said was going to happen. Jesus himself said it was going to happen. He would be put into that grave for three days and three nights. And then on the first day of the week, Sunday morning, he rose again alive with blood flowing through his veins, a heart that beat. How amazing to think that Jesus Christ rose up again physically alive and is now alive today as we speak, standing by the right hand of God, the throne of God, interceding and mediating on our behalf. Praise the Lord that we have a God who loves us so much that He sent His only Son into the world to die for us, to pay for our sins because we were born sinners and we couldn't do anything. There is no religious thing that I could do that would be good enough for God. And He knew that. That's why Jesus had to come. If I could be good enough, there was no need for a Messiah. But I wasn't. And so He had to come and He was willing to do that to die on the cross to save me from my sins. Have you ever chosen to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, to believe that He is who He says He is, and that He did on the cross what He said He did, that He is the way, the truth, the life? Have you ever chosen to believe that? The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. In John 3, Nicodemus, a very religious man, comes to Jesus. And Jesus says to him, you must be born again. In other words, you need to be born into the family of God and become a child of God. Have you ever done that? I'm not asking if you have prayed every night your whole life growing up. Maybe you missed a few nights. No, it has nothing to do with that. I'm asking, was there that one single time in your life that you chose to believe in Jesus Christ and what He did and to place your faith and your trust on Jesus Christ and what He did on that cross to save you from your sins, to redeem you to God for an eternity? Has there been that time in your life? It's entirely your decision whether or not you will choose to believe. He gives you free will to make that decision on your own. Will you choose to believe today? You say, well, how do I do that? It's a heart decision. And because it's a heart decision, it also means that you have to be sincere when you say it. You have to mean what you're saying, not just hoping that it works, but knowing that Jesus Christ is who He says He is. If that's you today, would you just reach out to me? Reach out through Facebook, reach out through YouTube, direct message me so that I can talk to you and tell you from the Word of God how to know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. Some might say, but you can't know that for sure. 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. He says there, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. The Bible says I can know. And you know how that is? It's not because it's not on my, based on my performance, but based upon my trust and faith in Jesus Christ. If you want to know 100% for sure how to get saved today, if you want to talk to me about it, please reach out to me. And I will talk with you and pray with you so you can make that decision today.